Hey everybody, this is Ben Atkinson from LinkedIn. Welcome to our interview series, Inspiring Leadership and Challenging Times. Each week we interview a different leader, learning about their journey and gaining insight on how they successfully lead both in good and crisis and challenge. As always, we have with us our resident leadership expert and coach, Jonathan Bowman-Perks. Who are we interviewing this week? Thanks, Ben. I'm very lucky this week that we've got the Lord Mayor of London, William Russell. In fact, William is the number 692, and he uh, has this uh, historic moment that I think has only been done for uh, many years now, where he's been extended for a second year as Lord Mayor of London, not just a single year, but two years, because we are in unprecedented times. So no, no finer a leader to have on in unprecedented times and talk about some interesting, challenging times. Welcome, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Jonathan, and thank you, Ben. Okay, so uh, you to become a Lord Mayor, it, it is a long journey, and you, you have to be seen as and known as somebody not only who brings perhaps business experience, you have a lot of experience in financial services, been successful in that sector, and it'd be interesting you could talk about the different uh, organisations you work for there, but also it, it's all about um, corporate um, and City of London, and it's also about giving back. And you, you, you're also um, a, a member of the uh, Haberdashers. Uh, you're a liveryman there. And your family has been involved in the City of London, many generations of the family. It's about giving back. But big part of what you've done is charity. Do you want to perhaps tell a bit of the story of the journey you've got to to become Lord Mayor? Sure. Um, so the first time I came across the mayoralty was age four. Um, and my grandfather, Sir Ian Bowater, was Lord Mayor in 1969-70. Uh, and um, at that time, I uh, didn't think that it, it was necessarily something at age four that I was going to, to, to aspire to. But um, uh, I always worked in the city. Uh, I was at Durham University, left Durham in 1987 and joined, uh, you know, during the, the peak times uh, when everyone joined the city in those days. And um, I worked for First Boston and um and then for for merrill lynch and i left uh, i did 19 years i left merrill lynch um in uh, 2006 uh, but uh, i've been a haberdasher and my grandfather's a haberdasher and haberdasher is, a, is one of the livery companies for those who don't know it and we're very big into education we have twelve and a half thousand pupils around the, the whole of the uk uh majority of them are, 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 are in academies but we have some independent schools that we uh, took on uh, many centuries ago funny enough um, and I was at the Haberdashers Hall and uh, leaving a dinner uh, in uh, 2012. Uh, and I'd spoken to, 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 to my wife, Hilary, uh, about being Lord Mayor uh, a while back. And she basically had said, look, it's, it's going to be too much work. I don't want to be involved. Anyway, as we left the Haberdashers Hall in 2012, she pointed at the wall. And the last Haberdasher Lord Mayor was my grandfather. And she said, there could be a lot of what ifs. Um, and I said, are you saying that, you know, you've changed your mind? She said, well, if you don't try, we'll never know. Uh, and then to cut a long story short, um, you had to become qualify as a magistrate in order to become one of the 25 aldermen of the city. And it's from the court of the aldermen uh, uh, that they select uh, the, the, the Lord Mayor. Uh, and I stood and got elected and the election was in the ward of Bread Street. Uh, it was contested, which uh, in itself was quite rare, but it was. And I... Um, I, I got a certain number of votes, uh, beat, beat the other person, and um, and so the rest is history. Uh, and you have to sort of you have interviews uh, out uh, of a, on the way through, um, and those interviews consist of three people for, who are from outside, who are in the city but aren't part of the uh, court of aldermen or past lord mayors, uh, and you have to be sheriff first as well. So I mean, it's been an interesting journey. I think uh, today you need to have that financial services experience because you are involved in a, a great many uh, meetings around financial services. But it's um, it's a different role even from 10 years ago. Um, yeah. Less ceremonial, much more business focused. Well, well let's, let's talk about that because the, um, the role that you have as the Lord Mayor of London, um, you're representing the City of London Corporation, you're representing financial services and professional services, not just in London, but around the UK uh, when you, whenever you go abroad. And if it was not for the global pandemic, you would be in all sorts of cities around the world representing UK abroad. 
because you know 11% of the tax take comes from the city of london the city of london is a powerhouse for our financial future and particularly people are wondering you know what does london have how relevant is something like a lord mayor in these current days and keeping keeping relevant keeping current and helping britain prosper just talk a little bit about that if you would well so the so you're the ambassador as lord mayor of london for uh, for the financial and professional services uh, which employs 2.3 million people. Um, and in a normal year, I would be 100 days of the year outside uh, of the UK in over 25 different countries. You make over 750 speeches. Um, and you are there, uh, as I said, the ambassador. There is the chairman of policy, Catherine McGuinness, who I work very closely with. And funny enough, uh, when you have a crisis like you do with COVID-19, I always think there'll be uh, a number of positives. Yes, it's a tragedy, but there'll be positives that will come out that you may not see straight away. And one of the positives I can see already is my relationship with Catherine Muniz has got much closer and we work very closely together. But she's there for five years, whereas the law mayor of the city is just there for that one year. Obviously, you've said in my time, in my, it will be two years for myself. Um, but you are, and she described me on a call the other day, as a, a, you're like the monarch or the president. I thought that was very good. I said, Catherine, I've really moved up in the world. You've now upgraded me to a monarch. Um, but that is part of what you do. And what we've learned in, 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 in our roles uh, since COVID is we're doing a lot of calls together, which we wouldn't have done before, meetings together. Uh, and um, two of you is much more powerful than one of you, representing the city and the City of London Corporation. Um, and we've uh, engaged in a, a number of virtual, a, a virtual engagement program. I've done more Zoom calls than I can count with CEOs in the UK, but also with people outside uh, the UK as well. So, for example, today I did a webinar in Mumbai, then went to Beijing and then went to Melbourne and then came back to the UK for lunch. <laughs> what a great way. And it's it's lovely during your time as Lord Mayor, your um, platform on which you're championing certain things, as well as making the difference you want to make, trade, innovation, culture. Uh, and mental health is a particular uh, among the many charities that you supported. Um, uh, it'd be interesting for you to talk about that. But also, as we know, you know, what was it like as, as you ran into this crisis within a couple of weeks of taking over? You know, no one's been in this kind of situation. And then also, perhaps you'd refer to the whole movement and the themes of the environment and, and what we need to do to think about our environmental footprint and impact, and also Black Lives Matter. These things are all coming to the fore. Perhaps, perhaps they're general topics we could talk about in this challenging times. No, absolutely. So uh, I rem that, the particular week when it all sort of blew up, um, we, uh, that, that, that Hillary, my wife, were, uh, has been tested positive, uh, and she was, uh, we were the last people to see uh, Prince Charles HRH. I haven't tested positive, so I blame her for passing it on to, to Prince Charles, even though I suspect he got it beforehand. But that week, we were hosting a, a big fundraiser at the Mansion House for the um, Australian bushfires. And that was probably the last event we did. And then, you know, you could see where it was going. And, 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 and you know, we left the Mansion House and we've been down here where we live in Cambridge. Um, to be honest, uh, Jonathan, the first two weeks, I was, I was floundering, partly because uh, I didn't know how long it was going to last. I didn't know what you know, I'd never done a Zoom before. I mean, I, I'm sure people admit that. They'd never heard of Zoom before COVID-19. I'd never done Teams before. So it was like, what were I going to do? I'm, I can pick up the phone to friends and things. But what happened was that I got a couple of calls after about 10 days uh, from past law mayors who said, um, how are you doing? And I said, well, to be honest, I'm sort of wondering what I, got, I can do here. And they said, well, look, let's pull this together. Uh, and then we started to have some meetings, we started to pull together. And now, um, you know, what I get used to get before before this, and I get today, is, is, is known as a day sheet. And I can see all my meetings coming up. And it was all pretty empty for the first two weeks. And then suddenly we created a virtual engagement program. We suddenly discovered Zoom, what you can achieve, uh, you know, virtually. And um, I always tell two stories on that front. One was a, pub a company that went public in Norway called Pexip. And it was about two months ago, and it was a similar company to Zoom. And they did their roadshow virtually. They saved 1,700 hours of flying time and 80 tons of CO2. Uh, and I've just, there's a, I'm doing a cultural conversations 
uh, and there's one tomorrow around the Museum of London. And normally we would host it in the Mansion House and we'd have 200 people there uh, or 250 people. We've got 700 listening in tomorrow. So you're actually reaching out to a far greater audience. So I think what's going to happen with some of these events when the Mansion House does come back is that it's going to be a hybrid. You're going to have people actually there and you're going to stream everything live as well. So you just can reach a far greater audience. So there's, that's something that, that one's, one I've, I've learned a, a great deal about. Um, on the mental health aspect, um, I'm deputy chairman of a wonderful charity called Place to Be, uh, which puts mental health counsellors into primary schools. But, it, 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 you know, uh, for mental health, that, that is about early intervention. But mental health is, is one of those critical things that uh, the CEOs of every company I've spoken to are talking about at the moment. Um, and mental health has come to the fore because of COVID-19, uh, which those of us who understand mental health are very excited about. And I think that's something that, that we're, everyone's talking about it much more, which has got to be a positive um, and then uh, talking about um, the climate change, uh, there was a partner of Sequoia, one of the big private equity firms, two months ago, who wrote in the FT, um, you know, we didn't listen to the scientists about the pandemic. Let's make sure we listen to the scientists about climate change, because that's the next big thing. Um, and COVID-19, in a way, has, has just highlighted uh, how important that is. And people aren't suddenly saying, um, you know, we aren't going to get involved. We aren't going to help with climate change, try and change things. Um, after the financial crisis, it took a back burner. It was just gathering some momentum. momentum and then in 08, 09, climate change didn't, was, was really put to the back burner. I don't think this will happen this time. Um, and, um, you know, we've got COP26 here in November 21. It is the next big thing that we have to focus on. And uh, the momentum is very exciting there. And the final point on... Uh, Black Lives Matter. Yeah, I mean, it, it is. It's an. It's another game-changing moment, and and uh, and it's it's wonderful uh, that we are. We we've got to adapt and change and um, and react. And mm. what, what happened before with that is that uh, listening to 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 Bane people is that there's been a lot of talk, uh, but not enough action. And now they that we need action. But one of the things I'd say about that is we have to listen to them, not tell. Our, our, our BAME friends, this is what we think we could do to help you actually listen to them and, and work out what we can we can do to help because there's a lot we need to do. That's very encouraging. And uh, for those who don't really understand the City of London, the institution of the Lord Mayor, livery companies, things like that, how do you think in the current crisis with London and all that's going on, you're going to make it more inclusive, particularly with the, the whole thing of Black Lives Matter, people from different backgrounds, uh, and people at places like financial services and professional services, where there has, at the top of most organizations, been far too many white male stereotypes privileged, and, and how we get to get a nice mix to show the diversity of our city, which is a very diverse city, London, and indeed the United Kingdom, which you have to represent abroad. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit about that. So, I mean, my view is that, as I said, we need to listen, but we need to, to react in a, in, a, in a positive way as well. And um, it has to come from the top and coming back to, you know, leadership. And, um, and I think, uh, you know, with, there's, there's, there's a lot we need to do. Uh, I look at uh, the mayoralty, 692, and we've had two female Lord Mayors. Uh, and um, I look at the Court of Aldermen and we have Baroness Scotland on the court. Uh, and uh, we have four women and, uh, and we have uh, Prem, Alderman Prem Goyle, who's, who's from Bain background. Um, but we can do better. And you, we've got to go out and, and encourage and, 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 and encourage to come in and give those opportunities. One of the things that the Lord Mayor's appeal uh, has is, is, uh, is um, power and inclusion, uh, power of inclusion. And we did a social mobility uh, seminar the other just two weeks ago. And, um, you know, there is so much we can do because businesses need to understand and they're beginning to that, 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 that your business is actually going to perform better the more diverse it is yeah. and, uh, and that is that, that's what the data says so it's in every business's interest to be much more diverse than they are at the moment yeah and and that is fascinating and, and your predecessors when they've traveled and they've spoken to different organizations in different places abroad what what actual difference do you uh, do you find over experiences you've talked because you've been a sheriff before and you've talked to other lord mayors um like um peter who was you know before yeah. you what what do they find they've 
achieve, people like Peter Eston and others? Because a lot of things take a long time to turn things around. They only have had a year. You've got two, but uh, one of your year, you, you're having to do things virtually. What would, if there was a few things that you can make a difference in, what would you like to make a difference? So, um, good question. Um, I would like, I mean, so my theme is global UK trade, innovation and culture. So every law mayor does inward and outward trade. That's part of the job. Uh, and, and Peter would agree with that. Peter's focus was very much on digital skills and he's kept that momentum going. And he, and it, it's, I mean, look at the digitization that just happened in the last three, three months. We need to, um, you know, the upskilling of all of us uh, in the digital world, uh, smart cities. So that was very much his thing. Mine uh, on the innovation side is very much around fintech, which you can see is the digitization and already in payment processing, what's been going on uh, during COVID has, has brought forward a, a massive digitization for companies that they weren't planning to do this quickly. And the other areas I mentioned briefly is green finance. The city is the green finance center of, of, the, of the world. Uh, we have more green bonds launch here. We have an impact investing institute. We have a green finance institute. We've got COP26 now in November 2021. We've got the ex-governor of the Bank of England helping to run you know, COP26 for the government. This is a massive opportunity for the UK to stand out uh, on the sustainability front and massive opportunity for, for the finance sector because you need financing to get to, to net zero by 2050. Uh, and uh, as Mark Carney would say, you know, they're the three R's. There's the, the reporting bit that the finance companies need to get right. There's the risk, managing the climate change risk with a lot of the finance institutions. And then there's the final bit, which is returns, and there are there's a lot of money to be made uh, from from ESG and the green sector. In fact, if you look at uh, if you had a portfolio that was ESG based, you would have outperformed on the up before March, and outperformed on the downside, uh, partly because you've seen what's happened with all the fossil fuel companies and oil companies on the downside. But it it, it is something that is that people are beginning to uh, to understand, and one of my roles is to help um, get those countries, the big countries like China and India on board as well by COP, uh, COP26 in uh, November 2021. So those would be something. And then the final one of my themes is culture. And I think one of the major reasons London's the greatest city in the world is it's our culture and heritage. And of course, COVID is, you know, destroying some of our culture at the moment. And we need to make sure we save um, our theatres and our museums and great news today that the Prime Minister announced that some museums and galleries can open, but there's a long way to go yet. And, and th that raises, thank you for that, that raises two very interesting questions. What, on the culture side, I'm interested to hear what the plans are for the Museum of London, because it's going to be in a new location. I think you've got some news on that. And on the fintech side, um, it's fascinating dealing with different fintech companies. And I know one of the areas that we're trying to break through, like Sweden has done, is to have one digital identity, one ID, that you can have this digital identity that, that banks and people who you want to buy from, they just go, oh, that's your ID, that's it. A bit like an ID card, but digitally. You know, what's your thoughts on, firstly, the, the Culture Side Museum of London, the second one, FinTechs and innovation yeah. on digital ID? So the Culture Side, a lot of people uh, don't know, but the City of London Corporation is the fourth largest funder of culture and the arts in the UK. And that's the Barbican, the Guildhall of School and Music and Drama, uh, the Museum of London, uh, and, and then the, with the LSO, we help with the LSO and they perform obviously at the Barbican. Uh, the Museum of London today is a big day, got planning permission, uh, was granted for the new site down by Smithfield. Um, and I've been on site and I've seen the plans and um, it is going to be absolutely incredible. Um, and as I said, tomorrow we've got this, this, this whole conversation with the director of, uh, of the uh, museum and the architect. Um, and so they, that, now that planning has happened, that is moving ahead. Um, and then, um, you know, we're hoping that the market, Smithfield market, will move out. And we've got bought this site in Barking and Dagenham. So we're hoping to move all the markets into one site outside London, which would make sense as well. And then there's an opportunity to do something with the Smithfield markets. Um, and then, uh, you know, where, where, the, where the Museum of London has moved from, uh you know we'll see what 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 we could do there but you know we've created culture mile which is really from the barbican all the way down to where the new museum is going to be and um and culture is not only important for attracting global talent to the city of london and london as a whole 
but it's that creativity and there's a whole generation that looks at creativity in a completely different light from the way uh, we we have done and you need that creative if people want to go and work at companies because there's more it's more than just making money there's a social purpose there's the creativity element of it and working in the city of london and some of these companies and we have a lot of great many fintech and tech companies you know is all part of the the cultural side that uh, makes people want to work here yeah very good um, and but on fintech and the digital yeah, fintech side, and di digital yeah. id yeah so digital id I mean, i'm not an expert in that space but i can see it could get to that but uh, as you know we're quite strong on our privacy side in the uk so that's going to be i suspect the big hurdle to get over is are people prepared to just to have any id at all i mean look what uh, what uh, the Blair government were trying to do, get through on a national identity. Uh, and that, um, you know, didn't didn't happen in the end. So, but I think digital ID, as long as it's considered safe and the privacy issues are, 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 are got over, then it is going to be the way forward. I mean, we've got open banking mm. and open banking is about how having all your banks accounts in one one place. So you, you don't have to be beholden to the incumbent banks. And yeah. Australia is about to launch that July the first. It's a, it's a, it's almost a copycat or replica of what we've done here. Yeah, no, I think it's it's a really great step ahead. So we're dealing with you know challenging times, crises. Any tips and advice over the years, and, and what you've picked up from your time now about handling crisis, what to do, what not to do? Any practical tips for people listening um, in their own businesses? So rather like, I, I mean, I mean. In my in my life, there's been one word that I've used, and I would say my tip in a crisis is is this one word: communication. If you can communicate, then you can resolve issues. It, it, it's something I know you know. Having talked about mental health, if you don't communicate your mental health issues, no one will know. Uh, and you may be able to communicate in different ways, but I think as a leader, uh, your role is communicating to your team, communicating what they're meant to do, uh, uh, and just making sure. Uh, that, uh, that 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 happens. Mm. Uh, so the one word for me would be communication, um, and I think you have to keep it as a high level of communication. Uh, my view is you can't over communicate, um, and um, and I uh, and people will say, "Oh, he's he's at it again," or he's on. The, I mean, I'm still of those one of those schools where there's no emotion in email. And if there's a if I get a bad email from somebody, I don't reply. I pick up the telephone. And have a conversation uh, because I think you can resolve those issues much better rather than a ding dong battle on on, on yeah. email. And get very, very well. um, so I think that's that 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 would be my my advice yeah. is communicate uh, strongly to uh, to your to to the troops as you would know, Jonathan. Mm. But um, but also make sure your your message is 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 known and it's uh, it's consistent uh, and. Um, you know, I think that that is, and, and it's difficult. Don't, I mean, look, we've seen, you know, how difficult it has been just being in government here and, and solving this crisis and the messaging. But but I think is if you can be strong and consistent uh, in your messaging, that's that's an important part of it. Yeah, and and then thinking about leaders that you've known over time who've handled challenging times and teams that you've been with might be a current team. Um, what what stories would you tell of leaders that you've known who've dealt well with challenges? Uh, and, and a good team that you've worked with in a challenging time. Um, that's right. I mean, a lot of, a lot of. I'm, I'm a sportsman, so I always like the team concept. And when I interview people at Merrill Lynch, I used to try and find out whether they had that team ethic. Um, and I think that's very important. I'm sorry about the telephone in the background. That wasn't. <laughs> um, and um, but I mean, the leader. I mean, it's it's a bit of a cliche, but I look at one person in the world, and uh, it's Nelson Mandela. But I, I suspect I'm one of many when I see what he went through and how he led his country uh, from the brink. Uh, and I have huge admiration for for him. But I, but I think uh, for me, um, as I as I I mean, that's on the national figure. As I look in my life, as far as um, you know, leaders are concerned. Um, you know, I, I think it's mostly probably team captains, um, and uh, a lot of it's around how they how they they lead by example. Now, you're all going to say, you know, what you've done during Netflix uh, during that lockdown, watch the Last Dance. But I look at the Last Dance, and I find that inspirational. And I think 
you know, he always, I'm, I'm very competitive. He always wanted to win. I always want to win. My children would tell you that I never gave, let them win at table tennis. But, 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 um, but I think what Michael Jordan did was he led, and he led. He, he even in practice, he wanted a win. And and yes, they're they're rough, they're tough sides to him, and he was tough. But uh, a true leader brings everyone along with him, and um, you could see that with the uh, Chicago Bulls. And um, you know, I think. I would aspire to, to try and do that. Uh, it, it's it's a difficult role. Yeah, and, and you have an interesting connection talking about uh, films. Do you want to talk <laughs> about it? your brother-in-law? Uh, no, no, my half brother. Your half brother is uh, yeah, Damien Lewis, and yeah. um, and uh, I, I like to think I taught him everything he knows. Um, <laughs> and, um, but he's uh, you went over. To, we, we met you when you were flying out. You and Hillary were flying over to. America, and you went to see. Was you, were you going to Hollywood? Were you going no, to see him filming? Billions. So he's now on his fifth uh, fifth uh, series, um, and um, and he's uh, he's he's great. I mean, in fact, um, I uh, uh, he did a little interview uh, on Friday for Royal Ascot for ITV, uh, and that was all about his next movie, which launches in September, called Dream Horse, which is about this horse called Dream Alliance. Which was bought in Wales and won the Welsh national uh, national championship, and it was uh, it was uh, a rags to riches story. So anyway, I'm sure yeah. that will be fun. But uh, yeah, he's uh, he's uh, he's done very well. well. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to hang out, hand over to Ben. We can always come back to some stories okay. and some further top tips. But Ben, do you want a, a quick fire questions over to you? Brilliant. Thanks so much, Lord Mayor. It's so good to have you uh, on board. Um, so anyone that's listening, please do like, share and post up questions. It'd be great to hear from you um, and uh, and get you involved. So while we're waiting for questions to come in, we always run a little quick fire round of questions uh, and that's based around three areas, um, healthy, wealthy and wise. So this is uh, around the things which you've have uh, made you successful in your career, the habits, the, the things you've sort of lived your your, your life by. So um, if you're ready, we'll, we'll jump yeah. straight in. So um, particularly poignant at this time is is uh, the fact that uh, people are under a lot of stress and uh, a lot of, lot of pressure. How do you cope with um, situations like this and stay healthy both mentally and physically? So I've bought a Peloton. So I'm now. Oh, uh, really? Uh, and um, I was. I was always. I would stay reasonably fit. Um, I, I played tennis, and but I would consistently rate not as fit as Jonathan, uh, but reasonably fit. Um, <laughs> but I have bought a peloton, and I think the peloton is absolutely great, uh, and that's what's keeping me going at the moment. And after this call, I will jump on my thirty minutes on the, on the peloton. Um, I'm one of those people that. Um, likes to do one event and then move on. So I've run a marathon and I've done right. a big bicycle race, a cycle ride, but I like to try and change it around and do different sort of fitness uh, fitness things. I haven't quite got into Pilates yet and I can't get it, <laughs> but um, I'm sure it's gonna happen the older I get. So you recommend it, but it's pretty good, the, the workouts on the... Yeah, the Peloton, on the I mean, it is. Yeah. I mean, because time flies and you, it, does, it does a, you know, you. you I mean, it's competitive, so you're on this leaderboard, mm. and you can do some live ones and unlive ones. But but the real thing that happened with Peloton when it when we when I decided to get one, which was two and a half months ago, my my son uh, uh, it was delivered here, and uh, my son said, "How's business?" And they said, four times busier than Black Friday." Mm. And uh, I said, um, "He said, Dad, you must buy the shares, and if I had, I'd be up forty percent." Uh, <laughs> missed opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, moving on to, to the wealthy question. Obviously, uh, in, in, in these tough times, there's going to be people who could do with some good, good advice around money. Is there um, any piece of advice that you, that you give or you've been given um, uh, about money? Um, so my grandfather, not on, on the, the Lord Mayor side, but on, my, on the other side, he always taught me to save. So mm. I've always been a bit a saver uh, because... Um, you just never know. Uh, save for a rainy day is a phrase, but you know, I've always, if I've ever had money, I've saved. Doesn't mean I don't. I'm not generous in other ways with it, but I've always tried to save, uh, save, and I've, that would be my advice: is um, mm. always put something aside. I wish yeah. I talked. I wish I talked to him myself, <laughs> <laughs> myself, and many others who extended ourselves in the good times. 
and now we've we've hit this uh, pandemic and the economic crash. We're going, oh, ow, this is painful. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, so we've got a, a question coming in from um, Andrew Pullman. Thank you, Andrew. So um, I just put the, the question up. So. Lord Mayor, I run an HR consultancy and clearly the newly invigorated agile working means that more people will not be working as often in offices. How do you think the city will cope with this? Uh, so, Andrew, thank you for the question. Um, I've, that, that's been uh, a topic of conversation with many of the calls I've done. Um, I'm not a believer that the office is dead. I do totally understand that we're going to change uh, working practices. Um, I came across a great phrase the other day called repositioned normality rather than the new norm, which I thought was a, a good phrase. Um, but um, I think you'll find that all the people I'm talking to, particularly the younger generation, want to come in uh, to the office because, uh, you know, you can't create a corporate culture on Zoom. You There's a networking element or, uh, you can't create on Zoom. There's the social element, and ultimately it was social and human beings. But I do think uh, the... How the offices are, are, are collab how the collaborate how it works in the uh, in the offices about collaboration and uh, and that the, how it's how the offices are you know with social distancing. I mean, I came across one one call where uh, one CEO said to me, uh, it, "This was when it was two meters, and as we know, it's just gone to one meter. Uh, but when it was two meters, he needed thirty percent more office space to make sure all his employees get it." So. Look, I don't think that's going to happen either, but I, I, I generally believe that there will be a change. Our biggest issue at the moment of getting people into the city of London is all around transport. Uh, my biggest concern, and I know I speak uh, with Catherine for Catherine McGuinness as well, uh, Chairman of Policy, is the SMEs. People don't know this, 99% of the businesses in the square mile are SMEs. Uh, and how are we going to help them get through this? Because all the people I'm listening to, um, you know, people aren't really going to come back to the office until September. 97% uh, of financial professional services people are working very successfully from home. So there's no hurry for people to come back. Uh, but I'm not, I do believe that, you know, there are lots of tech companies. So the space will change, but I'm not a believer uh, in the, the complete death knell of the, of the office. Uh, and yeah, people will, will will adapt accordingly. So there may not be as much space, but somehow I have this feeling that more tech companies will come in and they'll take the space or they'll change the space uh, uh, of the offices um, accordingly. Yeah, I mean, just build, just building on that, I, uh, when I talk to various different leaders uh, and others that we interview on this this series, Lord Mayor, they, they're talking about not moving back to how things were. We're not going to be moving back to anything. We're going to move forward. And, and I know it's an overused term, but the, the, the new normal, um, it, it's almost like an, an acceptable level of how we're going to work. I remember when I was uh, doing counter-terrorist operations in Northern Ireland, if we had four bombings and five shootings a day, that was a, an, seen as an acceptable level of violence, completely unacceptable, but that was the normal. That's how people sort of got used to it. In a bizarre sort of way, we're going to be working in a very different way. And people being much more flexible. In some ways now, many of the CEOs have said, what I used to find there was huge resistance to innovation and you know, pushing on innovation and, and trade. Um, oh no, that'll take years. You know, things happened in five days, which would have taken five years. And now people are really saying, really? Is the answer no? I think the answer should be yes. Let's find a way of innovating, changing. So I, I think you actually come in as Lord Mayor at a fascinating time when crisis in Chinese term it has danger it has opportunity and I think there's some great opportunity if only we'd seize it rather than looking on the bleaker side no I agree absolutely I think they're a great I mean as I said a lot of businesses have said that digitization has come forward by two or three years where they thought they would be in two or three years time and it's happened in three to four months I mean look at um, the, 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 the payment processing and I think it was Visa who said today the fastest growing area is over the 50s because the over 50s didn't didn't you didn't pay for things online they used to go to the shops so they're you're yeah, right there's a there's a lot of lot of lot of change yeah very much so fantastic so we've got a couple more questions yeah. um so angela angela patel um firstly she says um hi lord mayor i'm looking forward to the event um tomorrow 
Oh, right. um, and uh, we'll bring up her, her first question. So there we go. Sorry. So related to the health in the UK, do we think that there is a link to the S in ESG and the Lord Mayor's view of training apprentices, school leaders and grads in cyber? This could extend to furlough staff impacted by R35. Could this work towards the three R's, return to the UK economy to get the net zero by 2050? Wow. Gosh. Gosh that's, a, that's a tricky question. Yes, I agree. So do I think there's a link to the yes? I do. Um, uh, before COVID-19, I think everyone was focusing on, focusing on the E, and I think that's pushed push back to the S a bit, uh, well, quite a lot. I think one of the things that COVID-19 has uh, shown us is the inequalities that are out there are even greater than maybe we thought before. We knew were there, but what's happened is... Um, you know, those who are really struggling are, are you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the, those who are, are, are the poorest part of society. And um, we need to address that. Uh, so the social mobility bit and, and the City of London Corporation has a social mobility index. And we are working very hard on that. But I, I think that's a very valid point uh, of how we can do more training of apprentices, help the school leavers and the grads uh in 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 cyber as well so um i i think it's a big focus so yes i agree with that um and could the could this extent of furloughs are impacted well um i'm not an expert on that area so but what i do think is that um uh you know there is a massive opportunity in uh, in getting us to the net zero and I have said I was on a call the other day as a as a, a past graduate of Durham University to and I was talking to a whole lot of undergraduates and they said what do you, where do you think the greatest opportunity is uh, over the next number of years and I said it's all around sustainability and green finance because one thing you know is it's going to be around till 2050 because we've got to get to net zero by then so if I was leaving university now and looking for uh, a job that would be a sector uh, that I would be focusing on. Mm -hmm. Very good. Ben, you're on mute. Sorry. Angela's um, actually posted another question also. <laughs> um, one second. Here, here's her question. There we go. Question two relates to being wise. Lord Mayor, should we carefully review the detail around one digital identity to ensure it doesn't pose an obvious threat to the UK, especially as we are trying to rebuild the country? Resiliency and most importantly, give citizens hope that we are past the worst of the COVID impact and there are no more unknowns. There'll always be unknowns. Yes. <laughs> fear, of, fear of the future. You can tell she works in cyber, can't you? <laughs> yeah, Angela. Angela Thank you, Angela. Uh, I did my reply to Jonathan about digital identity was around privacy, saying, uh, you know, I, I think it's going to take some time before we get there and it will be looked at uh, very much um, uh, around, uh, you know, resiliency and cyber and security. Um, so I'm sure we're very conscious of, of that. In fact, I was on a cyber call today in India and some of the things going on there, uh, you know, people who are who want to do things more online or on their app but they're constantly the, the fraud element and the cyber element is something that's putting a lot of people off so we've got to get that absolutely right before we go to one digital identity mm. yeah yeah absolutely thank you angela some really good questions there um so we've got um, one from Dan, darren um winder or winder yeah. Lord Mayor, do you think we will go towards a four-day working week as it has shown that company staff have been more productive at home? Um, well, if you talk to my uh, my son, uh, I, I think he would love a four-day week. Um, <laughs> look, it, it, what we may go to, I'm, I'm, the answer is I don't know, but what we may go to is um, people work three days in the office and two days at home. I think uh, all the surveys I've seen, and particularly from Deloitte, People have proven to be more productive uh, working at home, and and as you know, one of the we, we, we that, that's now something that uh, people uh, recognise. Uh, whereas before, they were worried that they would be off playing golf or, or <laughs> pretending they're working at home or uh, not doing what they should. But actually, uh, they've been more productive. And, the, and a lot of the my, my concern about working at home too much is that. Um, between the, the 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 home life and the business life, you know, people are are just merging them into 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 one, 
Um, sometimes it's quite nice. You leave the office. There's an element of closure. I know the commute's a nightmare, but then you're home and uh, yes, you're probably more exhausted. So it, it, it's an interesting balance. And I think it'll be somewhere in the middle. Uh, as I said, I don't think the office is dead. I do think it's really important for people to interact and uh, and five days uh, or four days just working from home in front of your computer is, 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 in my view, is not healthy in the long term. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely not. Um, excellent. Thank, th thanks, Darren. And um, so final bit of the quick fire round oh, yeah. um, is uh, looking at um, wisdom. So is there a, a piece of wisdom that you strive to live your life by? So my, my family motto just happens to be K sera sera. <laughs> and I've lived by it. I've lived by it uh, all my all my life, um, and um, you know what will be will be, and I and and that would be, I just sort of you know that would be uh, that that would be one of my motto career. But the other thing that, 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 to add to that though, uh, or, or seriously, would be um, uh, you know one of the things I've been very uh, keen for people as, and particularly around COVID nineteen is 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 kindness, and we had mental health awareness. Mm -hmm. we, uh, two weeks ago, and the theme was kindness. Uh, and I've always tried to be kind. And I think that if you could be kind, it will it will get you uh, a long way uh, in life. And the other thing, which Jonathan knows, because I've said this before, but I always had a rule that if I got invited to an event, whether mm. I was a university or whether I was in the city, uh, I would always try and go because you just never know who you'll meet. At that event and uh you could change they could change your life you could change their life and you could help the network and and help people uh so on the whole i used to go to as many uh events so i rarely say no to people when they ask for a call or something which doesn't mean suddenly everyone can contact me and link in inviting a lot of invites <laughs> but, but right. link link with that lord mayor I, I do remember and was very taken by um always saying thank you to people yeah. and and i'm i really took your point when we discussed last time um with some of the leaders that i'm working with i said you know have you thanked them say oh yeah i sent them an email i said no no have you actually written them a handwritten card a hard card in an envelope saying specifically what you appreciate about the work they did because i've found time and again when people have done that people put it on their mantelpiece oh, yeah. or they they keep it by their computer a, a card saying thank you because these days no one does cards. They all no. do emails, and they're all lost in the ether in yeah. the thousands. What, what's your thought? No, I agree. I mean, you differentiate yourself by sending a little postcard and handwritten. Yeah. But. Yeah. Quick, quick question before we, we, we move on. Just sort of um, looking at um, looking forward out out of the, the the crisis. Um, so we 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 do a lot, a lot of work with our clients and modelling what the recovery might might look like and and um, how the sort of green shoots are, are, are sort of forming at the moment. What what are you seeing from 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 your viewpoint? Well, I think it's going to be slow. It's going to be slow, yeah. and it's going to be staggered. I think. Um, we, the word confidence. We need to. People need to be confident uh, about the the the, uh, the transport, uh, the office place where they're going into. I was uh, with a with, with legal and general two weeks ago, and there they had a test. They're testing uh, testing people as they come in. Um, mm -hmm. But the problem is that the tests still take twenty four hours, and the other problem is we don't have a vaccine. So we're going to be, and we may never. But so I, I think it, 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 we have to continue to be very be cautious, but also try and be a little bit more confident. And mm. uh, I have a, a, a my father who's who's ninety this year, who will probably stay where he is for some time. Whereas the younger generation, and we've all looked at the stats and the data uh, that you know there's one in a million chance of you dying from COVID nineteen under the age of uh, 25 was what I heard on the radio. And um, and uh, so I think that, that, that it, one has to sort of put a little bit of perspective, but that does the, the real issue there is you don't want the young to get carried away because then it will distribute to, to us older ones. Mm. Um, so I think we have to be careful, but I think um, it's going to be slow, staggered, uh, but I'm an optimist and mm. I generally hope and pray that uh, there, uh, there isn't a second, uh, second uh, wave. But I think yeah. if it is, we know enough about this that we can react accordingly. 
And it, hopefully, if it is, it may be in pockets, which we're already beginning to see from Germany and China, and they're adapting uh, accordingly to, to make sure those pockets. Um, mm. Test and trace is going to be critical as well. Yeah, and I think that's critical for the entertainment business that, you know, I want to have my, my iPhone or my, my smartphone and it says that I'm COVID free and I can go into the theater and, you know, you're going to have to show that and that's going to happen in stadiums, but we aren't there yet. So these are all mm. things evolving, but, um, but, you know, bottom line is it's not going to happen quickly coming back. So. Yeah. And looking to the positives, are you, is there anything that, um, that's coming out the other side of this this crisis that that um, you're actually actually thankful for. Well, I've got to know my family better, so I'm thankful <laughs> for that. I've had three months, uh, two months here, uh, which I'll probably never have a, again with all the family, all mm. of us being together. So I think that's something very special. Um, I also think that um, you know one has learned how to communicate with more people. So to reach out further, uh, and 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 that's something which I think is also been very uh, very important. I've also learned that probably, and I sort of knew that the, one of the most powerful things of being Lord Mayor of the City of London was the soft convening power. That power mm -hmm. didn't go away. In fact, you can still convene uh, uh, many meetings virtually, uh, and the, the funny thing is, you get more people on those calls than if you were doing it in person. Um, and so, from that perspective. Um, that's been uh, that's been interesting. That there's been no uh, no 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 diminishing of the convening power of of the mayor. Mm. Sort of digitally transformed your 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 role yeah. a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Fantastic. So thanks so much to the people who've who've asked questions. Um, we've got some uh, lovely comments on there um, saying saying thank you and uh, and and agreeing with your your answers, which is which is a good sign. <laughs> so th thanks very much for that. So it's really bring us close to the end of our time. And and before um, Ben fill, f finishes off with some uh, questions about what, you know, what you're reading or, or final thoughts, uh, Lord Mayor, I just want to share with people who are listening in the other um, people we've got in the coming weeks as part of the Inspiring Leadership in Challenging Times. Um, every Tuesday at five till six, um, come and join us. We've got next week, we've got David Hudson, who uh, is an executive working for the defense contractor Talus. And uh, he also did four tours with the SAS, a very interesting man and uh, an old friend of mine. Alistair Kett, uh, who was an army officer uh, serving with the Fusiliers and is a partner in PwC uh, the week after that. Richard Fenning, who has been the uh, global CEO of Control Risks and is now uh, a leadership coach. Uh, Chucko Yumana, who uh, is a board advisor and former member of parliament. Um, we then um, we're in discussions with um, a couple of senior people for the next one. I can't announce that yet, but that should be exciting. Then we've got James Cameron, who's the VP of Leadership Initiatives at Walmart in America. He's calling us from the States. And then we've got Colonel Lucy Giles, who's the president of the Army Officer uh, Selection Board at Westbury and uh, is a fine example of female leadership in the military. Uh, Simon Brewer, who works as the CEO of Advantage Investment Advisory. And then Kath Passamani who is the CEO of the recruiting group at Capita. So we've got some interesting people coming. Um, well, Mary, it's been a great honor having you here. I'll just let Ben finish off with a final couple of questions, but thank you. Ben. Fantastic, yeah. We will just finish the interview with um, with, with a delve into a, a book which is um, which is important to you um, uh, or, or something that you're reading at the moment um, as, a, as a recommendation. So on, so on books, I like books where they're a true story but they're written with a great narrative. So I'm a big fan of Ben McIntyre and uh, The Spy and the Traitor is one of my favorite books. Uh, I think, uh, you know, it's a remarkable story and the bravery and courage in, yeah. of, of, our, of our Russian man. Uh, yeah. who is still alive and still, uh, still lives in the UK somewhere. Um, yeah. But having just watched Salisbury Poisonings, yeah. wow. you know, that was a very interesting program. It sort mm. of brought home how uh, dangerous that world is. So that would be my recommendation. It's, it's a great read. Yeah. Fantastic. Lord Mayor, it's been an absolute honour and, and um, good luck with all your endeavours and um, your, your extra year of, um, of uh, service as well. Thank Thanks you very much. much. And thank you very much, Jonathan. Thanks, Lord Mayor. It's been great having you on. Thank you.